Wisdom, the final frontier to true knowledge. Welcome to Wisdom Trek, where our mission is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. Hello, my friend. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your captain on our journey to increase wisdom and create a living legacy. Thank you for joining us today as we explore wisdom on our second millennium of podcast. This is day 1168 of our trek and time for our Philosophy Friday series. Each Friday, we will ponder some of the basic truths and mysteries of life and how they can impact us in creating our living legacy. As we continue on this trek that we call life, Sometimes we have questions about life, so our Friday trek is a time where we can ask Gramps. Gramps will answer the questions you would like to ask your dad or granddad, but for whatever reason, this is not possible. No matter how old we are, I know that all of us would like the opportunity to ask dad or Gramps questions about life in many areas. We may mix it up a bit on our Friday episodes, but we'll strive to keep them down to earth and enjoyable. If you have any questions that you would like to ask Gramps, Please email them to Guthrie at wisdom-track.com. So the question for this week is, Hey Gramps, it seems like you don't have a real problem staying motivated, but staying motivated for me is a real struggle. I am constantly assaulted by negative thoughts and anxiety about the future. Do you have any wisdom to help me stay motivated more? So today we'll look at self-motivation. Staying motivated is a real struggle for nearly everyone. Even though I tend to be highly disciplined, I also have to be constantly vigilant so that I can remain on task. I have to admit that our drive is constantly assaulted by negative thoughts and anxiety about the future. Nearly everyone faces doubt and depression, but that doesn't mean that we should give up. What separates the highly successful is the ability to keep moving forward. There is no simple solution for the lack of motivation. Even after beating it, the problem reappears at the first sign of failure or discouragement. The key is understanding your thoughts and how they drive your emotions. By learning how to nurture motivating thoughts, neutralizing the negative ones, and focus on the task at hand, you can pull yourself out of a slump before it gains momentum. I have boiled it down to three primary reasons that we lose motivation. The first one is the lack of confidence. If you don't believe you can succeed, what's the point in trying? The second one is the lack of focus. If you don't know what you want, do you really want anything? And the third is lack of direction. If you don't know what to do, how can you be motivated to do it? First, let's explore how to boost your confidence because the first motivation killer is the lack of confidence. When this happens to me, It's usually because I'm focusing on entirely what I think I want and neglecting being grateful for what I already have. When you think about only what you want, your mind creates explanations for why you're not getting it. This creates negative thoughts. Past failures, bad breaks, and personal weaknesses start to dominate your mind. You become jealous of others and start making excuses of why you can't succeed. In this state, you tend to make a bad impression, assuming worse of others and losing self-confidence. The way to get out of this thought pattern is to focus on gratitude. Set aside time to focus on everything that's positive in your life. Make a mental list of your strengths, your past successes, and your current advantages. We tend to take our strengths for granted and dwell on our failures. By making an effort to feel grateful, you realize how competent and successful you already are. This will rejuvenate your confidence and get you motivated to build on your current successes. It might sound strange that repeating things that you already know can improve your mindset, but it is amazingly effective. The mind distorts reality to conform to what it wants us to believe. The more negatively you think, the more examples your mind will discover to confirm that belief. When you truly believe that you're capable and deserving of success, your mind will generate ways to achieve it. The best way to bring success to yourself is to genuinely desire to create value for the rest of the world, to help others also succeed. The next is, you need to develop a tangible focus because the second motivation killer is the lack of focus. How often do you focus on what you don't want rather than on a concrete goal? We normally think in terms of fear. I'm afraid of being poor. I'm afraid that no one will respect me. I'm afraid of being alone. 
The problem with this type of thinking is that fear alone is not actionable. Instead of doing something about your fear, it feeds on itself and drains our motivation. If you're caught up in fear-based thinking, the first step is to focus your energies on a well-defined goal. By defining a goal, you automatically define a set of actions. If you have a fear of poverty, create a plan to increase your income. It could be going back to school, obtaining a higher paying job, or developing a profitable website. The key is moving from an intangible desire to concrete, measurable steps. By focusing your mind on a positive goal instead of an ambiguous fear, you put your brain to work. It instantly begins devising a plan for success. Instead of worrying about the future, you start to do something about it. The first step in motivating yourself is to take action. When you know what you want, you become motivated to take action. And the final piece in our motivational puzzle is direction. If focus means having an ultimate goal, direction is having a day-to-day strategy to achieve it. A lack of direction kills motivation. Without an obvious next action, we succumb to procrastination. Let me give you an example of this. Say you're a person who wants to create a popular blog, but you spend more time reading posts about blogging than actually writing articles. The key to finding direction is identifying the actions that lead to success. For every goal, there are activities that pay off and those that don't. Make a list of all the activities and arrange them based on the results. Then make an action plan that focuses on the activities that lead to the biggest returns. To continue the example from above, if you wanted to be a blogger, your list might look like this. First of all, write content. Second, research relevant topics. Third, network with other bloggers. Fourth, optimize design and ad placement. Fifth, answer comments and emails. And then sixth, read other blogs. Keeping track of your most important task will direct your energy toward success. Without a constant reminder, it's easy to waste an entire day on filler activities like reading social media posts, email, and random web surfing. When my motivation starts to wane, I regain direction by creating a plan that contains two positive actions. The first one should be a small task that you've been meaning to do, while the second should be a long-term goal. I immediately do the smaller task. This creates a momentum. After that, I take the first step toward achieving the long-term goal. Doing this periodically is a great way of getting out of a slump, creating positive reinforcement, and getting long-term plans moving. It is inevitable that you'll encounter periods of low energy, bad luck, and even an occasional failure. If you don't discipline your mind, these minor speed bumps can turn into mental monsters. By being on guard against the top three motivational killers, you can preserve your motivation and propel yourself to success. The key is to keep moving forward. Remember, it all begins in the mind. To correct a motivation problem, you must first correct your thinking. Put into practice the advice found in Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And that's a wrap for today's question. Join us again next Friday for another question on our Ask Gramps episode. Our next trek will be Meditation Monday, where we will help you to reflect on what is most important in life. So encourage your friends and family to join us and to come along with us on Monday for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 1,167 treks or read the associated journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. And I encourage you to subscribe to Wisdom Trek on your favorite podcast player so that each day will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, But most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek Podcast and Journal. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. 
See you on Monday.